Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today I want to talk about one of my all-time favorite techniques that has been almost completely forgotten about. This technique catches so many fish from small to big, and it honestly can be used for lots of different species of fish as well, not just bass. And I don't know why it's been forgotten about. It's been something that really was took took the fishing world by storm like 20 years ago and lately you don't ever hear anyone talk about it so I want to talk about it in this video to make sure that some of you guys that haven't been using it or are new to the sport know that this option is out there because it truly is one of the best fish catching tools it is relatively snag free so it's great to use from the bank and it's something that it does not take much skill to use. It's kind of one of those baits that I consider a dummy bait. You cast it out, let it fall to the bottom, and slowly drag it back, and it catches lots and lots of fish. So that's what I want to talk about today. Before I get into that, I do want to remind you guys that if you're looking for a little bit of help on your local lakes, check out the lake breakdowns that I've done for fishthemoment.com. Myself, Johnny Schultz, Randy Blockett, We've all been doing lots of lake breakdowns. We've covered hundreds of lakes. We give 40 waypoints based on the season for each of those lakes. And if we haven't done a specific lake, you can request a personal lake breakdown. So check those out at fishthemoment.com. I put the link in the description. Okay, guys. So this is one of those techniques that has gotten has gone basically forgotten about in the last several years. Uh, I call it a mini Carolina rig but it originally came out as a split shot rig and some people refer to it as a mojo rig if you use the specific mojo uh, weights but all it is is a light weight that is pegged to your line so i can slide this up and down if i want to get some you know change the depth or the length to my hook and then you've got your hook and at that point you can use a variety of different baits but it's basically a mini Carolina rig because you've got a lightweight here with a leader to your hook. Um, you know, it's one of those things that for me, generally speaking, I'm using lightweights, you know, anywhere from an eighth ounce tungsten weight up to, I'd say maybe a three eighth ounce. I generally don't go heavier than that because if I go heavier, I'm going to switch completely over to a Carolina rig. But the whole idea here is this is like a finesse Carolina rig. So I'm personally throwing this on spinning gear. This is eight pound fluorocarbon line. I'm gonna use it on about a seven foot medium light action spinning rod. So it's something that I'm using to finesse those fish. I want a light weight so that when I cast it out, I can bring it back over the tops of weeds. I can let it roll down in river current if I'm fishing rivers. But it's really one of those things that I can use to cover water, but it's a slow finesse technique as well. So you'd fish it not necessarily where you'd fish a Carolina rig, because a Carolina rig, in my opinion, is more about offshore fishing. This is more in that 10 foot of water or less. But here are some of the keys to it. So if you've got, you know, say a, a small uh, stick bait, you know, one of my favorites is just a four inch Berkeley Max Scent General. So I'm going to rig it up here just to get that on so that we have a visual. All right, so when I rig this up, you know, at this point, I've got my weight with about an 18-inch leader. You can vary the leader length, but in, in my opinion, you're looking at about 18 inches being that ideal length. So with a light weight, when you pull that, say if you've got some scattered weed, the weight itself will kind of go into the weed and allow you to bring your bait through. Uh, it's also something where it's light enough where it'll stay on top of the weeds. If you've got maybe weeds that are in topping out at four feet of water when you're fishing eight feet of water. So if you want to stay on top of the weeds, it's a light enough weight where it won't sink down into the weeds, which is really key because if you wanted to go with a heavier bait here, you would end up getting stuck down into that weed. So it's a presentation that allows you to bring the bait up over the tops of the fish. Now, a couple of things about the weight. As you can see here, I've got, I've got just a standard bullet weight. That's my personal preference. Some people, you know, originally with the split, split shot rig, they were using the, the weights that you can crimp on the line. I highly recommend going against that because when you do crimp the weight on your line, there's a couple issues with that. 
number one, you're going to potentially weaken your line. So you created a weak spot for the line to break. And more importantly, it's a lot harder to change the depth or the length of your weight if it's crimped on your line. You got to take the weight off, recrimp it on. If you're using just a standard weight that you use with a peg it, in this case, you know, if I want to slide this down to what is that, an eight inch leader, I can do that. So I can change it back and forth based on the conditions that I'm fishing. So in some instances, if I'm fishing taller weed, maybe I want a shorter leader, maybe I want a longer leader. I can make that change right on the fly. Really simple technique there. Other people would like to go with like the mojo weight, which is a longer cylinder shape, uh, or just some other sort of barrel weights. In my opinion, the best thing you can go with is just a standard bullet weight because the shape of the, the weight itself comes through grass better, comes through wood better, comes through rock better. I think it's probably the best weight to use, but that's just me. At the same time, I carry lots of bullet weights and not a lot of barrel weights and other uh, types of weights and shapes, which are more specific to a presentation like this. I would rather have a weight that is more versatile that I can apply to you know, other techniques like just a straight Texas rig. So that's kind of personal preference, but I do think you definitely want a pegged on weight, and I prefer just a straight bullet weight shape. Uh, from a bait presentation, it kind of depends on what you're fishing. I think overall, you're always going to do really well with a stick bait uh, or, or a worm shape. You know, I've got five of my favorite baits here. The first being the four inch Berkeley General is a killer bait. I love the four inch power worm. This is an absolute killer bait on the split shot rig or the mini Carolina rig. Uh, the zoom trick worm is another great one for this presentation. You know, one of the keys here is you're taking a small worm that sometimes can be difficult to cast. We all know they catch a lot of fish, but you're because you're adding the weight of the split shot rig, you're able to cover more water and you're able to get your worm out in other places that maybe you wouldn't normally be able to cast to because you can generally cast this rig further than you would if you were throwing one of these small worms just on say like a slider head or something along those lines. Um, another couple of my favorite baits for this technique is a Zoom Ultravide Speed Worm as well as just the three inch Berkeley Pit Boss. And both of these, in my opinion, are absolutely dynamite when fishing smallmouths and if specifically in rivers and streams. Because what happens when you take this rig, it's light enough where you throw it out and you'll just, you know, allow the weight to bring your bait to the bottom a little bit, but it still rolls in the current. And if you're using small crawfish imitating baits like this, it looks very much like a crawfish skittering across the rocks in a small river or stream. Very, very good smallmouth bait. It works as well anywhere you're fishing on like a natural lake where you've got good rock transitions where you may have sand patches mixed in with rock patches and maybe some scattered grass. Really, really good technique for catching smallmouth, but it works for everything. Largemouth eat it up, spotted bass eat it up. I mean, you really can find a similar style rig in lots of other species of fishing as well. I mean, you see it for walleye, there's things like that. Guys do similar things in saltwater fishing. So it's a rig that's been proven to catch fish, but it's basically allowing you to fish a Carolina rig on a micro level in a lot shallower water where you're not dragging the bottom and, and pounding into the things. It gives you that finesse presentation. So guys, if you have not tried, whether you call it the split shot rig, the Mojo rig, the mini Carolina rig, you need to give it a try because it is an absolute fish catcher, super easy to use, and it is relatively snag free. It stays out of the, you know, out of getting buried in the rocks and the in the weed and the woods. So it's really something you can throw whether you're a bank fisherman or sitting in a boat. But no matter where you're at, you gotta give it a try because it is one of the forgotten techniques that should be brought back and be used by all anglers out there. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber of the channel yet, and stay tuned, another video coming out tomorrow.